Hey there, how's it going? I don't think I've been introduced yet. My name is Maz, and I am the main protagonist of one of Applove's unfinished games, Maz Trider. It's sort of like an arcade dungeon crawler where you go through a bunch of mazes and shoot a bunch of bad guys while collecting their guns. There's not much else to it than that. I've spent the past few years endlessly walking those endless mazes, and after a while I kind of just got sick of it, so I found a way to escape from my game and sneak into some of the other files on Applove's laptop. I found this devlog script, which seems to go over a few things about his new game Project Malice. Figured I might as well read it out and make a video on it, since he's too lazy to do it himself. I think I overheard that he's going on vacation for the next month, so now's the time for me to get back at him for neglecting me by basically spoiling his game. Don't tell him that I'm doing this. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Project Malice Act 1 was released last Saturday, which is the first of three acts the game will be structured in. Act 1 is sort of like a minimum viable product for the game, so it's a lot more than just a short demo. It's free, so if you haven't played it already you can check it out via the link in the description. This was supposed to be finished and released about a month and a half ago, and it was postponed because Apple have just kept adding stuff to it. Like, there's a pretty good chunk of content in there. It seems like a few folks have given the game a shot, not a whole bunch, but enough to get some decent feedback on it. Which is great, that means there are people who care about the game. Aside from a few things like finding out the game crashes if you click off of the game or alt-tab out of it while the game is in full screen, it seems like it runs fairly smoothly. Overall there's some good vibes with how people feel about it, which is great. If you're one of the select few who have played the game and have beaten the first two bosses, you might be wondering why there's 3B series entries in the Malice Index. If you're not, well spoilers ahead. Although I have heard that people who know spoilers to a piece of media are more inclined to enjoy it, so continue watching at your own risk. I'm going to go over the third secret boss and the rest of the things that have been added to the game since the last devlog. B03. Abyssal Void Organ. If you watched the previous two devlogs, Applove mentioned these things call void entities and void matter. The reason they were stressed heavily is mainly because of this thing. Abyssal void organs are large fleshy void entities that reside within nothing and are capable of converting regular matter into void matter, which in turn also creates void entities. They're basically the reason why nothing and void entities such as blind sight and something exist in the first place. When you reach the halfway safe area in the gardens, you'll notice two exits. One that continues through the gardens and one that takes you to an area called the garden's hedge maze. In the maze, you'll find an allflower and a visitor. The maze is randomly generated, so the structure of it will change each time you enter the room. If you lead the visitor over to the nullflower, the visitor will open up a shatter portal to nothing, which you can enter into and explore. When reaching the fifth level, you will be greeted by an abyssal void organ. This boss is much different than the rest, because if you read through the malice index or through trial and error, you'll notice that you can't directly damage this guy. All of your weapons deal zero damage, and the only way for you to kill it is to make it attack itself, or by tricking the softlocks that it summons into attacking it. A small content update was put out after the release which made it so that they take damage every time they teleport, so technically you could just wait for it to kill itself, but the fight will go much faster if you can get it to damage itself. This boss was a wide variety of attacks, ranging from rapid fire bullets to laser beams, to rapidly slamming the area around it, and every time it teleports to summons a few void tentacles which have a considerable amount of range and will pull you closer to it if it hits you. Once it reaches its third phase it'll start flashing the screen with discouraging text. I'm an empath, and I'm sort of getting the vibes that this guy doesn't like you very much. After you kill it, it will drop the nullflower item, which negates all status effects, and will open up a shatter portal back to the maze area. It's definitely a unique fight, and in my opinion it's much harder than the main bosses, since you kind of have to completely shift out of how you normally fight things in the game. A few things I would recommend when fighting the Abyssal Void Organ is to holster your weapons by holding down the weapon switch button and to use the arrow keys to pan the camera downward to see which way the attacks are facing, so it's easier to direct the attacks from the tentacles and the softlocks towards it. B29. Barbed wire. Wait a minute, I recognize this. It's a barbel from Rose Blight. Yup, not even Ao Cow is safe from the virus. These guys most likely wandered into Earth after a cosmic freeway portal opened up and brought them here. Barbed wires will not only attack you by biting you, but they also deal contact damage if you touch them. They're not much of a threat, but they can do hefty damage if you ignore them. If you look carefully, you'll notice that they actually still have the Rose Blight default palette on the outlines and in their mouth, which I think is a nice touch. E30. A RAK droid. Applove's been wanting to bring these guys back into one of his games for a while, unlike yours truly. These guys are not technically fully implemented yet and are only available to fight in the simulation chamber. 
Applove is planning on having them be a mini boss that you'll encounter randomly. These guys are fairly large, and they attack with movement patterns that are similar to theirs in Clockwatch. K023. Albino. The big fluffy monster that just wants a hug. Oh, that red stuff. Just strawberry jam. Albino is one of the subjects that escaped from the AACF facility in something. They're big and slow, but they'll swipe at you with their claws and will deal a whole lot of damage. Not much to say about them other than that, they're fairly simple but still dangerous. K449. Staircrawler. A piece of feedback that was received recently is that the hallways and the aqueducts, previously referred to as the backrooms and the poolrooms, are pretty empty, and it feels like there should be something in there. So, Applove added something in there. Staircrawlers are spider-like entities that dwell within these spaces. These guys are invisible when they move around and reveal themselves briefly while attacking. If you're not paying attention to the mini-map or to their footsteps, there's a good chance they'll jump scare you. A06. Knight. Knight, as some of you may know, is the main protagonist of Rose Blight. Or, one half of them, at least. I won't go too much into what they're doing on Earth and how they tie into the story of Project Malice, but long story short, they're going to try and kill you. They appear as a mini-boss in some of the wave rooms you might come across and will briefly converse with you before they proceed to kick your ass. The weapons they use are a chain gun, a trowel launcher, which is built into their mechanical arm that Marmot made for them after the events of Roseblight and God Hand, an extension of their ascended form. When you attack them while they aren't attacking you, they will also dodge your attack and then use Pasina, which will apply stasis if you are within close proximity of them. They will also occasionally do backflips around the room. Applove has been looking forward to adding them into Project Malice for a long time, even before he finished Roseblight. I really like their new outfit, it's pretty simple, but I think it fits their character well. Because they're more of a developed character now they're probably not going to act the same way that they did in Rose Blight, they're still the same violent edgelord, but they're a little less of a whiny little punk and more of a cocky rival with a soft spot kind of character. A07 and A08. Venice and Florence. Venice is one of the main protagonists of Buckler 2, and Florence is one of the mini bosses that appears at the end of the game. For those who haven't played it, which is pretty much everybody, these two are siblings. Florence initially was an Oliverian like Venice, and when she went off to go fight in the Regrogian race war, she was captured as a prisoner and was experimented on by Marmot in an attempt to figure out how to turn olives into roses. When Venice and his pals interrupted the annual Rose Bowl tournament that Marmot was hosting, he fraud against Florence and only realized it was his sister after defeating her. These two are from the timeline where Venice doesn't kill Florence, and they work together to defeat Marmot and help reunite the Regrosians. Don't worry about the other endings for the time being. The two of them both carry large tower shields that sport spikes on the front of them, named the Buckler and Buckler II respectively. Like the ARAK droid, they're a planned mini-boss that you can fight against in the simulation. As for the reason why they're attacking you, it'll most likely be as a result of some misunderstanding, or because you're playing as a specific character that hasn't been introduced yet. Their attacks are fairly simple, they walk towards you and smack you with their shields, and they can throw them like a frisbee. At the moment they're the only enemy that has a shield, which reflects any attacks that you make in front of them. The best way to fight them is to wait for them to throw their shields, and then attack them. Subject A04. Samantha. The Angel Reaper Lady from Rose Blight. She was brought back to continue her role of being the observer that collects souls of the fallen, but instead of helping you defeat bosses, she occasionally appears in wave rooms. You can challenge her to see if you can kill more enemies than her, and if you beat her, she'll give you a raven feather, which is an incredibly powerful item. She's pretty fast, and all of her attacks pretty much insta-kill everything, so you have to be quick if you want to beat her. Subject A05. Page. The main antagonist of Reversary. After the events of Reversary, she decided to figure out what the hell is up with the whole cosmic freeway business and decided to check it out, causing her to end up on Earth. She'll appear in the garden safe area and can be recruited if you pay her. Her attacks are similar to the ones in Reversary, where she does jumping attacks with her sword and fires projectiles with her glove. There's a conversation that occurs between her and Livin that reveals that the two of them are co-workers, so they're both time travelers. A fun fact is that after you talk to her, a plushie of Zoromer appears in the hub area next to the laptop. Subject A09. Gel. Gel is a gelatinous entity that takes the form of a woman and is capable of morphing their body into pretty much anything. They were created in an AACF facility and escaped from it after it was overrun by the malicious. She is a recruitable character that appears in the sewer's safe area. She can punch enemies for you, and when she takes damage, she splits into three smaller slimes that can individually jump out and attack enemies, which reform back into her original form after a few seconds. Not really sure why he added a slime girl to the game, maybe it's for a fetish thing or something, I don't know. She is pretty cute though.
That's pretty much all the important stuff that was written down for this devlog. There's some other stuff about how Apla feels about the game in its current state, like how there's a bunch of characters in there and just how chaotic the game is overall. If I remember correctly there's over 50 characters in the game so far, which is actually kind of impressive. I wouldn't be surprised if he runs out of ideas and adds something like a custom enemy creator just to see what other people can come up with. The rest of what's written down just kind of seems like a bunch of rambling, so I'm going to cut that out. If I'm going to be real with you guys, I don't think this game is going to do well. Like, it's a cool concept, but honestly it just seems like he's kind of just taking all of the characters from his previous games and forcing them into one. That's usually only something you've done once you made it big. He only has like two games that people sort of know about and that's it. Maybe I'm just a little salty because I never really have had that much attention myself, but that's just how I feel. But, if people like it and actually play Project Malice, maybe I can sneak my way into the game and sort of leech of that popularity. Stealing things and using other people's stuff is what I was made to do anyway, so maybe I can get back at Apla by using the skills he gave me. This is the end of the video. So you can stop watching now. I'm not going to do the whole like and subscribe bit because this isn't my channel, but if you like this stuff then feel free to subscribe if you want. I'm probably going to bounce so I can avoid people trying to. Oh shit, I think someone saw me. Later, nerds.